Recording in progress. Awesome. All right, let's get started on uh, some. So we're going over like the first half of chapter one. There's there's really no math today. We're we're talking about uh, what statistics are and what they, all the vocabulary and stuff that we'll need. So, so that we're in. Man said it. Uh, statistics is the study of data. Chapter right, it is a chapter one and twenty one. There is no chapter twenty one. Uh, statistics we study data. In statistics we study data. Uh, in fact, that data is called statistics. Statistics are a numerical summary. Numerical meaning number. There's numbers of related to them. Are a numerical summary regarding a sample of the population. So bright, hopefully more visible. And why do we care about that? So what? Who cares? Uh, well, we like to use data to make decisions. in the real world. That's what we do. We come up with questions and we try to find answers to them. Now, there's a couple reasons why we just want a sample of the population, maybe not the whole population. Uh, asking the whole population, can be prohibitive, time and cost prohibitive. It costs money to do that. May not even be accurate by the time you're done. And then just think about asking every household in the U.S. Oh, I forgot our guest speaker. Put that on pause. We have a guest speaker coming for you. Let me load up the thing real quick. Hey, guys. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bob from the solids of the CT for service. All right. Where were we? So data. Uh, so we could ask the population, but it could take too much time. It's, it's more, it's going to take too much time if you're talking about any real world population. It's going to cost too much money. It's probably not accurate when it's done. And what's the worst thing of it all? You have too much data at that point. It's unmanageable. Like the U.S. Census is every 10 years. They survey every household in America. Can they survey every household at once? No. Uh, they can't even get every household to log in at the same time to do something at once. There's no way. Uh, uh, so they got to go door to door. And even if they have like 20 people in a town going door to door, by the time they start at one end of the city and get to the other end of the city, it's been weeks, if not months. Shit's changed because they're asking, did any, anybody born this year, the last 10 years? Anybody die? By the time they get across the town, those numbers have changed. Someone's passed away. Somebody's been born. 
so the census isn't even accurate. It just gets really, really, you know, a good, good approximation. And then they have all this data, like unless you are the U.S. government, having that much data is unusable. It's really unusable. How do you do it? So we like to sample populations. A sample is just going out and asking a group of people. So samples. Population are a subset of the population. And get this. Ideally, less than 5% of the population. There's a number. I added that in. Less than 5% of the population. We talk about that a lot later, uh, but I'm throwing it in now. Because, like, if you're going to, if you start going above that, you're just asking too many people. You get what you need basically out of 5%. Unless it's, if 5% isn't enough, you might as well ask the whole population because you have a small enough population that you can just ask them. Uh, so uh, if we did ask the whole population, this same numerical summary would be called a parameter. Parameters are a numerical summary of the population. You're like, meh. Uh, it does matter because we will use, throughout this semester, we will talk about things that are relate to a sample and things that relate to a population. Uh, when we use algebra and stuff and variables, we will conveniently use entirely different alphabets. That's good stuff. Change the alphabet. <laughs> Don't use the same alphabet. And then you know, oh, shit, that's not an English character. This is the other thing. You'll see. So usually when we're collecting data, we can't ask everybody. And so we just get part of the data and we, we try to make decisions about the population from that. Using using the statistics gathered. We try to infer something about the overall population. Based on that sample. You see this all the time in uh, polling season. As it gets closer and closer to the polling date uh, or voting day, uh, recent polls show Democrats are up three percent, or it's this this percentage, this percentage, and they'll do it again a week later, and the numbers have changed. As as the you know may not have changed a lot, may have changed a lot. Something may have happened drastic. Four percent Republicans are up this time. They're not asking every person in America. What they're doing is they're going out in particular towns and asking just random people in that town. And if you hit enough random people throughout the country, you can get a good idea of what's going on in the country. Uh, so they get a good idea to judge what's going on. Uh, so what type of data do we collect? If I pull something away too fast, do you need it up longer? Or if I go too fast, let me know.
data is the plural form. A single piece of data, a single number is called a datum. I'm not even writing it down because I don't give a shit. And I know that if I don't, you don't. So we have two types of categories we have here. Uh, we could have qualitative. Qualitative. And we could have quantitative. Qualitative kind of has like the word quality in it. Quality or trait or characteristic. This is categories or traits. Quantitative has, it sounds like the word quantity. Uh, so this is numerical related. So qualities, attributes, characteristics, uh, they can include numbers. I use the pound key for number, can include a number. Uh, the types of numbers they include though, Numbers you wouldn't add or subtract. Subtract, or let's say multiply, add or multiply. We'll give a list of them in a second. Yeah, uh, example stuff. Quantitative must be numerical. Not only does it can it have numbers, it must be numbers. The reason why is because uh, we can use math operations on it. Like adding or multiplying. Subtracting. Dividing. It's come in like two subcategories. Uh, we have discrete and we have continuous. Discrete things are things you count. It needs to be countable. So like we're using whole numbers. I got one student, two student, three student, four student. But there is an end point to the number of students I have. I, there's only a fixed number. I could have, you know, I could, we could talk about the entire population of California. We go one citizen, two citizen. It's going to get really, 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 really high, but we could count them if we really tried, really, really hard. Continuous things are things you measure. Things like, you know, like length, width, height kind of thing. Uh, we measure time. We use a stopwatch for time. Uh, we can measure weight.
She's is she not here or did she change seats? Let's see her. The one I was blasting on the other day. She's got pink guy. <laughs> Oh, shit. Tommy did tell me that she was not feeling well. She's on Zoom. Hi, Tommy. Uh, yeah, I hope you don't have pink eye. <laughs> you still on there? Oh, chat message. <laughs> I have a fever, she says. No, so it wasn't me. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I have to say, though, Tommy, thank you for being sick. This made an excellent chance for a joke in here. That's kind of a fucked up thing to say, but thank you. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's dive into like some examples. So qualitative. Oh, red hair, hair color. Hair color is a uh, quality. Nationality. Zip code. Zip code is a numerical one, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to add zip codes together or, you know, multiply and reduce it like that. Other ones in that category would be like area code, uh, social security number, things with numbers that you don't multiply or add. What else we got? <laughs> Gender. Type of car you drive, if anything. Another one that's, new, that's got numbers, but doesn't really make sense to you add or subtract, uh, what grade level you're in. Like if you're talking like high school, like freshman, like ninth grade, 10th grade, they're numbers, but it doesn't mean like you don't add grades. Not really. They're more of a category. I guess you could, but no, no, no. Second grade plus third grade doesn't equal fifth grade. <laughs> So that doesn't make sense to add them, right? If, if that's only how it worked. Uh, quantitative, we listed a, a few up there. Uh, what else do you measure? Things that like length, uh, temperature. So quantitative. Distance. Distance, <laughs> distance shows up in, in length, but we'll put that here. Distance is a better way than saying length. I like distance better. So distance, time, weight, temperature. Not really something you measure, you count it. And you can like multiply it and add to it. So well, I guess, I guess, yeah, income. I was thinking discrete versus continuous. Yeah, income. <laughs> Yeah, income's definitely a number you you want to multiply. You want to add to. You really don't want to subtract from. And dividing just means you have an X who's draining your resources. Oh, yeah. Please tell me when I'm uh, pulling a rookie move. That's... Tommy told me she was, she emailed me and said she was sick. And I said, I'm going to have Zoom open. Uh, and sure enough, she's there. She's watching. Like, I ain't missing this shit. I just don't want to get everybody else sick. So she said, it's true because she's here. You guys ready for more? <coughs> I see Pin still going. I'm going to wait another second. And if you find yourself squinting too much and you're in the back row, there's a lot of room up here and you don't have to sit in the blast zone. There's room like right over there too. The blast zone's fun though. You get to interact with the teacher. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay.
Why were you sitting there last week? That's always been your spot. Future habit. Right. But why were you over there? She said she took your seat. I was right there. Why? Why? Why was I there? Why weren't you there? That's your spot. This is my spot? That's your normal spot, but you weren't in your spot. It was occupied last week. Oh. That makes an excellent reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I remember. She saw me was right there. That's all I remember. <laughs> That's just because I kind of kept telling her, you know, hold your breath, you know. No, no, you your breath. I didn't warn her of that. I said, you'll know when to hold your breath. She said something else. I want her to feel included because even though she's sick, she's part of the class. Don't sit in the front, you'll get pink eye. <laughs> All right, enough of the peanut gallery. <laughs> You're not being listened to. Let me stop recording, turn Zoom off. You guys ready for more? <laughs> Sit in the front, we'll get pink eye. <laughs> the process of statistics. So what do we do? We identify a research objective. And populations that we want to study. Uh, populations doesn't necessarily mean people. <clears throat> doesn't have to be people. Or even living. Population could be the number of cars that go down Mooney Boulevard. And what are we picking by a population? It doesn't have to be like everybody in the city or something like that. It's just a group of objects or individuals that share a trait. Some cases that trait is being a human being. Like if uh, the survey is what's the gender, I'm assuming I'm asking a human. Like, who gives a shit what your dog's gender is? You do, but no one else does. Group of objects, share a treat. All right, so once we get that research objective, what we're going to do is we're going to conduct an experiment to collect data. And that's kind of like what the rest of chapter one is about. Chapter one. It talks about reasonable ways of doing it, things like that. So there's not really a lot of math in this chapter, but it is an important step. You like without the experiment, the collection of data, we're just making numbers up, <laughs> which is what I usually do for your tests. Just make shit up. Do I, you think I go survey people? No, I don't survey people. Just make it up. All right, so once you've conducted the experiment and you've collected the data, what we do with the data is we use the data to develop what is called descriptive statistics. They're descriptive because they describe the sample.
And this will be chapters two through four. There is a method to this madness. And finally, we perform inference. Infer something about the population based on the data, on the sample. Whatever the research topic is, really. Based on the sample. Infer something about the population based on the sample. That says, well, I, I really need to work on my hand. Apparently, it's getting worse. I used to write really well. It doesn't look so much that way now. Okay, so like, ask 100 people, like if I ask like 100 people and I want to decide, like make a judgment or determine something about a population, I could be 100% correct, which usually is wrong, not true. Uh, or I could be completely off, or I could be really, really close, ideally really, really close. Like if I'm trying to figure out the average income in a population, hopefully I'm within a couple thousand, maybe, you know, not with like, not like 50,000 away, that's a little unreasonable. But like if I'm within a thousand or two, I've got a good average. Uh, so sometimes our data, is it reliable or not? Uh, so that's what we do in some chapters. We discuss reliability of the data, how more importantly, how reliable it is. And this is like chapters five through eight. We're doing stuff in there. And then uh, we also like there's different ways of analyzing the data. So we start looking at techniques in chapters nine through 13. Uh, you've got the data deciding what you're going to like, depending on what your research objective is, there's different ways of going about doing it. If I'm just asking one group of people, and I'm trying to see like what percentage of them say yes, that has an entirely different technique than saying, okay, I'm gonna ask all guys and all girls and see how they compare. So when I'm comparing two different groups or three groups, four groups, it's different techniques than just doing one group. Uh, and we'll go over ways of doing all that in chapters nine to 13, which I think uh, once you learn like chapter the nine or 10, I think it's 10. Once you've got 10 down, uh, like the rest are pretty easy. Because once we do this, we're doing, in this set, we're doing hypothesis tests. Uh, and hypothesis tests have five steps. And only one changes for each technique. So it's kind of like learning the base recipe and then going, oh, what am I going to add in? I'm making cookies. Do I add in chocolate chips? Do I add in oatmeal and raisin? This is a fucking great example, the cookies. Do I add in M&Ms? Do I add in uh, cinnamon and make it like snickerdoodles? Yes. Oh yeah, the people in the back will not miss it unless they're looking on the left screen, which is harder to see.
I know when I was, uh, the thing I didn't say uh, when we were talking about different things that you measure, I said time, that really includes age. I know like if I'd said my age, I would say it at the number of years, but that's not really true. Unless I'm telling you my age exactly at the exact time I was born, X number of years ago, it's not really accurate. There's days and years, and but I'm really just rounding off to the years. Uh, and we always, what do we do with age? You always round down. You're 49 years old and 11 months and 29 days. You're fucking 49. You have not hit 50 yet. We don't round up. The beauty of, that's a fun idea. So that's 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, anybody need this up longer? Are you guys ready to talk about other things in statistics? I think that's page three. Try to number them that way. I keep them in order when I'm scanning them. All right. Uh, 1.2 is like on variables and statistics. Very welcome. Thank you for asking. I rely on you guys to tell me when you can't see whatever the hell I'm doing. That shit's like behind my eyesight. Some teachers like to face the board and like not look at the class, but how do you know when they're not listening or not getting what you are, are listening, but they don't have that, they got that kind of eye look like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, look, that look. You can't see when you're looking at the chalkboard. <clears throat> uh, so in variables and statistics, we have a couple different types. We've got the explanatory variable. And it explains why an outcome has occurred. known as the cause. And what goes with cause? Effect. The effect variable is called the response variable because whoever came up with this shit didn't know what the words cause and effect meant, so they decided to use some fucking confusing ass shit. The response variable is uh, what was affected? What was the outcome associated with? So let's give you like a little scenario. Scenario. Uh, it was conducted on teenagers. Not on, with, with teenagers. They didn't like hook them up to like shock treatment or anything like that. Survey was conducted <laughs> with teenagers. Uh, and it was uh, to see if owning a mini fridge in their room in the bedroom uh, was a precursor or led to obesity.
And so I will ask you, what's the explanatory variable? And what's the response variable? So actually, can you put in the average cost? Say that again. Put the explanatory variable in. What did the mean fish cost? Does that make any sense or not? Kind of, but. It's not 100% accurate. It might be easier to start with what's the effect? What are they trying to see? What was what caused what? Like, what effect are they checking to see happen? Not quite. That is, we're going to bring that up in a second. We want to know if having a fridge causes, so that's the cause, having a fridge. You're getting ahead of me with these drinks and fucking shit like that. Whatever Hansel said, whatever items you had in it. Having a fridge, does that cause obesity? Are they obese? So like this would be like a yes or no. And this is probably ends up being a yes or no with some decision on what is the fine line for obesity is maybe based on height and genders. I love that. More and more people are obese every year. That number, I think it keeps going down. It's not that we keep eating more. It couldn't be that. All right. So uh, you were bringing up drinks. Why? What was your what what was the thought process behind that? Every time, see what if it costs so, so the reasoning being like what's in the fridge, not the owning of the fridge matters, but what's in the fridge that is like having sugary drinks. Yeah, like the Even capacity of the fridge could matter. Like how much can you store? That just means less trips to go and store more shit in it. But, but what about what's actually in it? Don't the contents matter? If it's filled with like fresh fruits and, and bottles of water, says no mini fridge owner ever in their bedroom. Well, it could. I mean, it could. What's in the fridge kind of matters. You know, is it all that matters? What other things could cause obesity? This, what? Lack of exercise. So obesity triggers, we'll call them. Obesity causes. Lack of exercise is a great one. Health issues. What do you mean by that? Do um, you drink a lot of soda? Okay. So lifestyle or what they actually consume. Lifestyle and diet, maybe. Diet being not like go on a diet, but like what you consume. Genetics. Genetics. Genetics could affect it. What is that problem here? Yeah. What? What is that problem here? It's genetic. If you want to put it under the health issues, it's, this is just given coming up with a, a list of possible things it could be. Uh, environment. Shit, that's a good one. You live where it's hot, you sweat more. Environment could also be related to the lifestyle thing. Like, what? Like, do you live in a. a a household, are you in a culture that encourages excess eating? Siestas? Uh, yeah, you know, things like that. So what these things here are called, these are called lurking variables. They affect the outcome
whether someone's obese or not, but they are not studied in the in the experiment. Lurking variables. They're lurking. They're hiding. They're doing shit behind the scenes. Yes. Great time wasn't here. Never had that happen. The next class day after you know the first class incident, <laughs> and they didn't show up. That's I've never had that. You're not the first class to experience the the true wonder of uh, being in my presence. You guys ready for more? That was number four. Uh, okay, so like, what, okay, so we have lurking variables. What if we try to address them? Uh, so change the scenario. We ask about exercise and shit like that. And all that other good shit you brought up. Well, if we do that, if we ask all that, but now we get to the point where we're going, which one do we blame it on? Right? Blame is not necessarily the right word. Like sometimes it's a good thing. Like if we're about to go through nuclear winter, I'm, obesity is a fucking great thing. You're going to outlive the cold, the skinny people because you're going to survive the cold. <laughs> so there's always, you got to look at the silver lining, right? There's always, there's pros and cons to everything. Sometimes obesity is a winner. Okay, so which one do we blame it on? When you have a situation like this where there's one or more possible explanations that are being examined or explanatory variables in the statistic lingo, these are called confounding variables. And it really, what it boils down to is it's impossible to determine. Unless you can control all the factors except one. Now in this problem, the scenario with uh, does having a mini fridge lead to obesity, there's one you cannot control, genetics and health issues. You could pick people that have identical or very, very similar lifestyles, similar diets. You can address all the other stuff, I, I, I think, even the exercise level and stuff like that. You can address all that other stuff, but you can't address genetics. There's no, like, you can't pick people that are all the same because we're all different. 
So that's impossible to address. You can't exercise because you have a disability. So then that will that will have to Yeah, either health issue or exercise level. Either way. It, it, the idea is just to show, like, come up with the things that are wrong in doing a given experiment. Things, things you should pay attention for when making an experiment. When you're making an experiment, is there some shit you're not thinking of? Like, like stop and think about it. Maybe ask somebody else. Is there anything else that could explain what I'm going after? Like, if they if no one else, like, if you ask, like, some questions, it doesn't matter. In this question, it does. Like, there's other explanations, but sometimes it's like, do you like Pepsi or Coke? Does it really fucking matter why? The explanation doesn't matter why. It just all matters whether or not you like Pepsi or Coke or none, neither. That comes, that comes into the next thing. Well, not next thing, but soon. Uh, so those are things to pay attention for. Uh, lurking variables, confounding variables. You want to not have them. Uh, either by being very specific in your research question or trying to control everything that you can. Some things you can't control and you, you're just going to have to deal like the genetics thing. Uh, you can't control. Uh, so there are different ways that we do studies, though. So different types of studies or experiments. That code's not going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see if there's. Oh, something. you're leaving. Oh, yeah. really? No one took that. It's like I'm deeply offended, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it. See if I can figure it out. I'll see if there's. Uh, different types. Of, okay, so uh, one we have the observational study. Let me move it up. I know I'm getting down near the bottom. So observational study. Uh, what we do here is we measure the response or write it down. Without trying to affect the outcome. or even or influence any of the variables. We're just watching or asking. Is ready for more? Nope, I see some pins still moving. All right. Uh, the next type would be a rather than not trying to influence it, we're trying to influence it, and that's called a designed experiment. So what are we doing here? Individuals are assigned to a group. Uh, and the explanatory variable is intentionally changed.
intentionally changed. Uh, and then the response is recording. Now, there's a really, really important difference between these two, and it's in what we get out of it. An observational experiment can only show correlation, not causation. The words of what they mean. And so, like, correlation is there's a link or relationship between the two. And causation has the word cause in it, so it does exactly what you would think it does. One causes the other. A design experiment showed causation. And I'm going to say done well can show causation. You literally have to try to eliminate all the other factors or make them so that there's no reason to think either of the groups would be different other than the thing you changed. Sure, I'll bring this up again at some point. I know I have it later in the notes somewhere. But an example of this is uh, in the summertime, ice cream sales go up and crime goes up. That's fact. You can observe it. You can do research on this. You look it up. It's fact. Crime goes up. Ice cream goes up. Do ice cream sales cause crime? Does crime cause ice cream sales? You can't, you can't really prove it. I can't even think of a good link. But they are going up together. So a change in one is, is occurring at the same time as a change in the other. That's called a correlation. I can't say there's one causes the other here because... What is the you what is the factor that have that they both have in common? They both happen in the summertime. Now, why crime goes up in the summer, I don't know. Maybe people are out of like uh, teenage delinquents are out of high school and uh, they're out causing a ruckus. 
or people are hot and they get irritated and they, you know, get fights or whatever, whatever the reason crime goes up, I don't know, it goes up. Ice cream sales going up in the summer is kind of fucking obvious. It's fucking hot. You want something nice to cool down that tastes good. Uh, so that's an example of correlation versus causation. Uh, well, that's a good example of correlation. An example of causation. Uh, so maybe I'll write that down. Uh, so correlation. Example. Ice cream. Shit, that doesn't look good. Ice cream sales versus crime in the summer. And if you want to look at one with causation, uh, like a, a double blind experiment with a placebo. And we'll talk about that one more on Thursday, I think I see you guys next. Yeah, it's Tuesday, Thursday. We'll talk about double-blind experiments and placebos. So that's content for then. Uh, but they're all the medical experiments you hear. Just taking this drug, like when they test medical new drugs, they need to do a double-blind experiment to make sure they can say the drug is doing what they're saying it's doing and not, it's just not a random correlation. So we'll talk about double blind and single blind and placebos and stuff on Thursday. What else do we want to talk about today? Oh, other information about, does anyone need this up longer? We're almost done. You guys are getting out early. Unless you want to stick around and hang out with messages. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about cross-sectional. It can be uh, info is collected all at once. For a bunch of different groups or uh, looking at the same group and uh, or over time, collected over time. Like they check in every month and tell you what they weigh or something like that and you're tracking weight. Uh, this has some overlap with the, the next one, the case control. There's a couple ways of doing this. One is uh, retrospective, which means people are asked to think about the past or respond about the past. like over a period of time, or we have long-term studies. Maybe they don't check in every week, maybe they do. But the point is we're like checking to see what happens like 30 years from now. Like it's easy, like this is gonna be happening with the the vaccine shots for COVID, they think there's no long-term side effects or, or whatever, or minimal long-term side effects, uh, but we won't really know for another 30 years. Yeah. How can you, you know, stuff that may change? 
Uh, it happens like cancer is higher nowadays than it was in the past, probably because a lot of our shit's processed that we eat. Uh, there's chemicals added, preservatives added. Who knows? Whatever the reason is. So the, you do long-term studies. You want to see what's changed over 20 years. So you, you can either ask them after 20 years, what did you do 20 years ago? And what's different now? Or you just check it and does something change? So you do it that way. Uh, another thing, a word they use is cohort. Cohort is a group of individuals studied over time. at least in statistics studied over time. I think I'm gonna do 1.3 with the rest, but I do wanna cover two more terms for you. Uh, we have the some term you may not know is frame. A frame is the list of individuals in a population. Kind of like a roster. And the other one that goes with it is census. There's a, a list of individuals or a frame. And their characteristics. Sunglasses change color. They look yellow right now, but they look like bright pink a second ago. It's the angle. There we go. It's, that's slick. I like that. You think we've done enough torture for today? Who wants me to go on? I can go on. I got time. I got I got a whole semester of notes here. Who wants me to go on? Who wants to go home? A lot of you just don't give a shit. <laughs> let's let's call it a wrap. I, I think uh, the next stuff goes better with the other stuff, and the other stuff takes longer than what the time we got for. Sebastian's like, my fucking parents show up at seven and you keep letting me out early. You're not used to what? Well, I don't have any like math stuff to do with you yet. So, I mean. Like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. What is that? Uh, physics. Oh, you have like a question or? No, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, I, yeah, I figured. I, I knew you were multitasking. Some people, some people do homework in other classes. While they should be paying attention, I'm fucking with you. That's it for the day, Tommy. I hope you feel better. <laughs>